Behold the profound humility of Gerald Williams. He is without sin, untouchable, and above all, the gains of Gerald Williams. A weanling to start with, an appluviophile. He flourishes in the rain. Their healing waters are as ablutions to him. My teacher once taught me that every moment is a miracle, and to the extent that I can believe that, this life is, to me, given as a gift. I am in life and of life, and I heartily gulp every breath of air given me during my time here. If I could save time in a bottle, I would go back and drink to the fullest each moment, each day of my life. Welcome back to Project Zomboid. The fire, the fire in my soul rages on, for it is not a life in sickness or in health, or a long life or a short one that I desire to live, but each moment is a miracle. Today we make efforts to raise our humility and gain good karma. Fire is entirely natural. Its uses are unnatural. Allow me to demonstrate in my next example. Step one, take a night drive. A day will come when you can't avoid it any longer. That unbearable question. And you'll face the elements. You'll build a fire. And in this time, in the midst of your enemies, you will find a safe haven. And you will know, you will know true fear. And though you may walk in the valley of the shadow of death, you will light a fire. Get out of your car. Build a goddamn fire in the middle of the road. Don't look back. And though you walk through the valley, light the fire. Run. Go. And watch it spread. I will make you a fisher of men. Go and set the world on fire. And don't set the town on fire, though. Circle back and don't die. Parking, parking, much as it ever has been, is free. The best things in life are free. Fire is natural. If this actually works, I, I may have all of Muldra at, at my disposal. I think for my car, this might be the end of the road. I'm not tired yet, but at least we have music. It's time to blow my horn. At least I'm safe inside my mind, and I could always take these antidepressants. I think that more are showing up as the night goes on. Weirdly enough, this exploit still works. I think I'm safe in here. As long as they keep pushing, if you're familiar with the concept of a balanced force, it starts to make a little bit more sense. And it's it sounds like they're starting to die off near me. But I think that this wall is almost gone. Right on cue. Maybe I can back... Nope. I think that might be it on the car. I am now worried. It looks like the draw order got messed up over here. Uh, but I am still alive. I'm okay. The walls are only slightly charred. And it's a beautiful night. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. For you are with me. You're rod and you... I'm starting to get kind of chilly. I'm a little worried about Gerald in there. Hang in there. Hang in there, buddy. Somehow the horn is still working. There goes the second wave. Progress. I think I could just hold my hand down on the horn, signaling everyone for miles. Somehow my car hasn't gone on fire. Thank god I have insurance. I may be here a while. I get what I deserve for exploiting the natural order. Well, the uh, headlights are out. Turn on the heater. I'm always afraid I'll miss out on something if I forget about that exploit. And like the lowly turtle, I emerge from my shell. But I largely think that this was a Pyrrhic victory. For what now remains? No, your efforts are not in vain. And though you may work for an ulterior motive at the outset, your rewards will be internal. Realized only after the fact, may your heart be great and your soul an unlikely treasure hoard. I am satisfied in this ending. Initially, I had hoped that I could fend the zombies off from these stores and not burn them down. But they burn down. There in the corner, only a few books remain in this entire bookstore. I was hoping I'd be able to do a lot of reading next, but knowledge, however it can be achieved, is worthwhile. Not that we're gonna get much from these. We got a smoke bomb recipe, timer recipe, metal containers, which we've already read, two books, which is fine, and a tailoring book, which won't really be very useful. Not our best run here, but it looks like everything else is burned down. They took out many of the other stores along with the bookstore, but it appears as if this block is now emptied. It's safe to travel again. The corpses contain only a few clothes. Though my car is now dead, it can move maybe a few feet. Nonetheless, new options arise. What of number one? A few finds. Though I, I forgot my screwdriver at home. But this one has a key. And a, another tire. Another car with a key. And a screwdriver in this trunk. More water bottles. A rare opportunity at the police station. It contains little, but what there is, we take. The armory is open. And its defenders remain. Maybe they'll have something on them. Left 
left over. Time and time again, I'm reminded, don't pick fights in close quarters. Some of these have more arms on them. A police jacket. I'm practically Rick Grimes now. Bulletproof vest. Definitely better than what I've got on. And we'll take the rest of these jackets. It looks like there are more with vests. I'm choosing a new vehicle. The rest of the complex is decrepit. Our last car is wasted. Fortunately, I saved the gas. I am bruised but not broken. And I can pick myself back up. I take after the mollusk. And I can change shells instantly. I have the means and the resources to sustain myself. I have gas and that means petroleum. So in the meantime, while our car's battery is charging, we can explore the rest of Muldraw. I think this whole place was pretty much burned down in the wreckage. These bodies tell stories, but those are stories of loss. And I, I need that. Secret am I. And full of wiles. Treacherous. Mean. And now armed with a spear. Thanks. Thanks. It's hard to ascertain, but inroads may be possible here. At least momentarily. So while there's a chance we steal inward, we need to be decisive. Tricky. Uh, another duffel bag. I've been looking for one of these. And we go in the back door. Seems there's more in here. I'm more skilled in combat now. Far stronger than I was to start. Progress is made faster. A hoodie. I haven't found one of these yet. I hear more. Oh, that's time to go. I thought I heard something out the window. And here they come. Uh, it wasn't long, but I've kicked the hornet's nest. What I meant to be a covert mission has become Sherman's march to the sea. It's time to get out of here before they get us. And the hour is getting late. <laughs> That's enough to start the car. Although these cars need charging, they do work. Some just refuse to go down. And with that, we're off again. This day has been cruel, but very productive. I sojourn here unknowing. Still, to me, it's the root of self-reliance. And I study tailoring for hope that someday my children, my offspring, can study philosophy and fill the metaphorical minute with 60 seconds of distance running faster, ever faster, and honing my skills day after day, all in pursuit of that elusive singularity. Where go my efforts? Each day is an opportunity, but also a source of guilt. Have I run far enough? Have I improved? I log my progress and take data. A source of joy, focus, and anxiety all at once. With all of this having been done, I'd now say we're ready for a new phase in the journey. We have the means and the power to take back Muldraw. It will definitely require a lot of fire, but if we can limit the radius of its spread, it might be worth it. And if I can't do that, I could at least find a better car. So many opportunities abound. And if we execute this right, we might even fully secure the gas station. After all, that means an unlimited source of power. But there's still so many around. This may take a while. And the outskirts I flushed out now appear to be more populated again. Was it all in vain? Sort of. But I have a plan. I lost a tire. I don't know where that happened. I'm still going though. It happens. We might be fighting back for Muldraw again. If so, then let our efforts begin strong. This diner is completely undefended. How did it get this way? Uh, there is an alarm. Okay. Well, that's enough of that. We found pretty much nothing here. Matches in an empty jar. The car still works somehow. We just need to drive very carefully, elusively, and find another one. I can at least take down a bunch in the area. It never seems to get much better, but day by day, a little bit worse. Cars make great friends. At least backing up works for now. It's the only way I can take out enough that I'll have hope at getting another car. And that's it. This one's out. I'm out. It wasn't worth it. I acted with pride. But maybe this is a new opportunity. After all, I'm stronger now. Stealthy. And I can fend for myself better. Someday the Wheel of Fortune will turn back in my favor, I'm sure. I just need to take a few items out. I did need what was in the trunk. And that ought to do it. I have another idea. This is gonna be a very heavy journey, but I think I'm up to snuff now. And I have with me all the means to act any car in the world. And if you know Zomboid, you know what I'm about to do. I spied something earlier that might be a godsend and save my life. So after you've rested a few days, pack your alarms, place them strategically, and await the hour of reckoning. Get ready to run. Your chance will be limited. Connect the generator and steal away. And the next day, once the earth is rotated, sound will be your distraction. Let the fog cover you. And with the generator out, you can call it cheesy, but it will give me gains. And with that, I'm out of here. I'll be back here in a few hours. That battery was at 100% though, and there'll be a major change when I return. You'll probably go down to 10 FPS, but you'll be farming your light-footed. And you're sneaking. What's fun about stealth in Project Zomboid is that it's governed by how many zombies are nearby you're being stealthy near. So I'm farming at about 10 a second, but it's just that it's taking about 5 seconds for a second to go by. There we go. Now we're really hitting the jackpot. We're not detected by many of these. And... 
I think we're gonna max out right here. Now, as you can see, obviously the game performs really well in this under these circumstances. It's a bit of a slideshow here, but I did do one of the most populated parts of Muldraw 2. Just be careful because everything that you need to react to, you need to react to about five seconds earlier. As you can see, I'm being chased now. This is the actual speed of the game. And it looks like I'm going to need to run away. And as I get farther away, it starts to get faster. Really just one of my favorite exploits. Not only in this game, but it brings me back to RuneScape. Just be careful you don't crash your PC. But if it works, it works amazingly. And there we go, another two levels. We're already on our way to light-footed level 5. Sneaking level 5, we can't even load it in yet. You'll know if your game starts to look like this that you're doing it right. Don't worry, it'll be fine later. There we are, now I'm back at 60 frames per second, or somewhere thereabouts. Now don't forget, this is the beta branch we're on, so take everything with a grain of salt. I just love exploits, and I know you do too. Though that's about as much as we could get for now. It is still dangerous, and the sizes of those hordes seems to have destroyed my, uh... Yeah, the FPS are not doing too well, but they'll start to disperse again now. As long as I've played, this exploit has always worked. I don't know if it'll ever be taken out someday, but... It's just one of those things that makes this game so special and runescape -y to me. Everyone loves a good stat exploit. And like I said, statistics are enough reason to live. I know we aren't halfway up the skill tree yet, but this at least gives us some ground to cover. You know, it's hard to train stealth if you can't be stealthy in the first place, so... At the very least, this gives us a springboard from which to jump. Well, that was a lot of work. I think we'll leave it there for one day. Gerald Williams has made a lot of progress, and he's now looking like he's at almost level 5 for a lot of his things. We'll see if I try to min-max him. He's very good, though he's still developing in a lot of ways. And a lot of exploits aren't there anymore such as the fitness and strength tree pushing exploits. But then again, there is this new fitness branch that I haven't experimented with too much. And I've also got to go home and harvest some cabbages. That as well as get back my battery charger. This may be more difficult than I gave it credit for, but it's time to relax. Anyway, I think that's all for now. We'll leave it there and make more progress tomorrow. We did quite a lot today. As always, God bless the AA support group. Thanks for watching. As always, my name's Ambiguous Amphibian, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.